In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. It's wonderful to be able to welcome you all here this afternoon for this Mass of Ordination. Um, perhaps the gathering is a little smaller than we might have had under other circumstances, uh, but there are great numbers following us on live stream, so um, I'd like to welcome all of you joining us through those means as well this afternoon. This is a moment of great joy for the whole diocese as uh, Tom comes forward today to be ordained a priest. It marks an end and a beginning. The end of many years of formation, much prayer, great preparation, the ups and downs that come with the life of a seminary student. More ups than downs, of course. Um, it's also a beginning, the beginning of priestly ministry. And I know that all of us here today and those who are, are, are joining us, as I've said, through live stream or those who cannot be with us at all for whatever reason um, are praying very specially for you today, Tom, and for your family. I'd like to take this opportunity for thanking Tom's family also. The family gives to our diocese a new priest, and that is a wonderful gift, and we thank you for that. Whenever we come into the Lord's presence, each one of us in our different ways, conscious of our faults and our failings, all those things, that would keep us from the fullness of life that the Lord wishes to share with us. And so we begin our celebration as we always do by calling to mind those sins and seeking for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to this deacon of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by his ministry and life he may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever.
A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord, word of the Lord was addressed to me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came to birth, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as prophet to the nations. I said, Oh Lord, look, I do not know how to speak. I am a child. But the Lord replied, Do not say, I am a child. Go now to those to whom I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to protect you. It is the Lord who speaks. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, There, I am putting my words into your mouth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 4. Do not let people disregard you because you are young, but be an example to the believers in the way you speak and behave, and in your love your faith and your purity. Make use of the time until I arrive by reading to the people, preaching and teaching. You have in you a spiritual gift which was given to you when the prophets spoke and the body of elders laid their hands on you. Do not let it lie unused. Think hard about all this, and
and to put it into practice. And everyone will be able to see how you are advancing. Take great care about what you do and what you teach. Always do this, and in this way you will save both yourself and those who listen to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Holy Father, I have made your name known to the man you took from the world to give me. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I passed your word on to them, and the world hated them, because they belonged to the world, no more than I belong to the world. I am not asking you to remove them from the world, but to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, so that they too may be consecrated in the truth. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do you judge him to be worthy? After inquiring of the people and upon recommendation of those who discern the district, I testify that he has been found worthy. We rely on the help of the Lord God and our Saviour Jesus Christ, and we choose this man, our brother, for priesthood in the Presbyteral Order. Tom is now seated comfortably, socially distanced, um, and uh, it's a great pleasure for me to address a few words to um, all of you here uh, in our cathedral church today, and as I said at the beginning, those uh, watching from great distance via live stream, but very principally um, to Tom himself. Tom, you are being ordained at a very interesting moment in the life of the church and indeed the world. All of us in this cathedral this afternoon um, are living with the consequences of the present pandemic. Uh, for many of us, our lives will have been touched very specially uh, by this experience. For many in the diocese uh, that you are coming to serve, um, many families have been affected very deeply by the events of recent months. Many people in our world have questions in their minds and hearts. What is the meaning of all this? Where is my life going? And into this context of uncertainty and question, you step as a new priest. So this is, a, this is an opportunity for us. It's not without its challenges, but it is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for the church throughout the world. It's an opportunity for the family of our own diocese. And it is an opportunity for every priest. And it is an opportunity for you to bring into this world with its problems and difficulties and strangeness, the message of Christ. And we know that the answer to the questions that people have, the answer is the person of Jesus Christ, the Word who is life, the Word made flesh, the one who gives us the complete truth. 
you begin your ministry with the words spoken to Jeremiah. Do not be afraid. I am with you to protect you, to be with you. It is the Lord who speaks. The Lord has accompanied you on your journey, on this wonderful journey that you've had through life thus far, to this point. And the Lord will always accompany you on your journey in every step that you take. Paul, writing to Timothy, encourages somebody new in the ministry and life of the church. He encourages somebody who perhaps uh, is a little wary, a little frightened of all that lies ahead. And in the same way, those words that Paul speaks to Timothy, you can take in your own mind and heart as an encouragement for you in all that lies ahead. A priest is called to preach the word in season and out of season, whether the message is popular or not. The priest is called to celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass, to celebrate the other sacraments for the people entrusted to his care, to do all these things in accordance with the mind of Christ and the mind of the Church, for those two cannot be separated. The priest is called to be a person of deep prayer. Without prayer, nothing else will happen. Your words will fall on deaf ears. Your ministry will be, as it were, stunted if you are not a person of deep prayer. And the priest, together with the people he serves, evangelizes the world. It's the task of all our parish communities, our religious communities, the presbyterate of the diocese, the body of deacons of the diocese, our schools. All of us are in this one business of proclaiming Christ to the world. And your service will be a proclamation in itself and also enable others to be proclaimers of Christ's gospel. So as I said at the beginning, it's wonderful that you know that you have the support of the prayers of everybody in this cathedral and so many others as you embark upon this wonderful ministry. Remember always that the priesthood is not yours, it is Christ's. Sometimes it's difficult to keep a grip on that. In today's celebration, Tom, you are in a way the center of attraction. We're all here because of you because Christ has called you. And it's really important for us as priests each and every day to remind ourselves that what we do is not about us. It's only about the person of Christ and should only ever be about the person of Christ. The priesthood that you receive today is the Lord's priesthood. He calls you to share in this wonderful gift that he gives to you himself personally. A great gift that you receive not for yourself only, but for all those whom you serve and those whom you will never see 
who through your prayer and your witness will be changed. So we give thanks today. We give thanks that Tom has answered the Lord's call, that those initial stirrings calling you to faith have brought you to this day. So we give thanks for all of that. We give thanks too today for all those opportunities that are going to come along in the future when you will be the Lord's instrument. And as I've said before, every one of us here prays for you that you will be the priest the Lord calls you to be. The more open you are to that possibility, the more effective will be your ministry and the greater joy, too, that you will have in the exercise of your priesthood. May the Lord bless you in all that lies ahead. My son, before you proceed to the order of the presbyterate, declare before the people your intention to undertake this priestly office. Are you resolved, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral order as a conscientious fellow worker with the bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Are you resolved to celebrate the mysteries of Christ faithfully and religiously as the Church has handed them down to us for the glory of God and the sanctification of Christ's people? I am. Are you resolved to exercise the ministry of the Word worthily and wisely, preaching the Gospel and explaining the Catholic faith? Are you resolved to consecrate your life to God for the salvation of his people and to unite yourself more closely every day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for us to the Father as a perfect sacrifice? I am with the help of God. Do you promise obedience and respect to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that the all-powerful Father may pour out the gifts of heaven on this servant of his, whom he has chosen to be a priest. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Pray for us. 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 Lord, be merciful. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. 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 By your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Guide and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring all people together in trust and peace. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Strengthen us in your service. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. We ask you, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the Living God. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Hear us, Lord our God, and pour out upon this servant of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the grace and power of the priesthood. In your sight we offer this man for ordination. Support him with your unfailing love. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Come to our help, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. You are the source of every honor and dignity, of all progress and stability. You watch over the growing family of man by your gift of wisdom and your pattern of order. When you had appointed high priests to rule your people, you chose other men next to them in rank and dignity to be with them and to help them in their task. And so there grew up the rank of priests and the offices of Levites established by sacred rites. In the desert, you extended the spirit of Moses to 70 wise men who helped him to rule the great company of his people. You shared among the sons of Aaron the fullness of their father's power to provide worthy priests in sufficient number for the increasing rites of sacrifice and worship. With the same loving care, you gave companions to your son's apostles to help in teaching the faith. They preached the gospel to the whole world. Lord, grant also to us such fellow workers, for we are weak and our need is greater. Almighty Father, grant to this servant of yours the dignity of the priesthood. Renew within him the spirit of holiness. As a co-worker with the order of bishops, may he be faithful to the ministry that he receives from you, Lord God, and be to others a model of right conduct. May he be faithful in working with the order of bishops so that the words of the gospel may reach the ends of the earth and the family of nations made one in Christ may become God's one holy people. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Father anointed our Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. May Jesus preserve you to sanctify the Christian people and to offer sacrifice to God.
accept from the holy people of God the gifts to be offered to him. Know what you are doing and imitate the mystery you celebrate. Model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross.
pray, brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, which is mine and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who have willed that your priests should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you and in your church bear fruit which lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Peters, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysostom, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merit and prayer, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for this your servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And in your mercy keep safe your gifts in him, so that what he has received by divine commission, 
he may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. 
At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take me. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Please just sit for a moment, thank you. Can you start walking to your mind? After the um, anointing during the ordination, um, the priest um, dries his hands with uh, a cloth, which Tom is now going to present to his mum. Now one of the great questions that is discussed as a priest prepares for ordination is where is the bishop going to send him? Father Tom doesn't know yet. Shall I tell you now? Oh, go, on then. go on then, he says. He <laughs> says, go on then. <laughs> Father Tom doesn't need to pack his bags because I'm appointing him assistant priest in Guildford. Just before the final blessing, um, a number of thanks. This has been a very extraordinary ordination in so many ways. Um, rather a different celebration to the one that we would perhaps normally have, but it's been exceptionally um, prayerful. I'm sure you'll all agree, and it's been wonderful to celebrate this uh, Mass with you all, and a wonderful privilege for me and indeed uh, all of us here to uh, be involved in the celebration of uh, the ordination of our new priest. Please continue to remember him in your prayers. Now, after our celebration, there will be um, a shortened and socially distanced procession. Uh, and then I'll come back into the front of the, the sanctuary with Father Tom. And at that moment, I'm sure there will be spontaneous applause. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, who founded the church <coughs> and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you a servant and a witness in the world to divine charity and truth and a faithful minister of reconciliation. May he make you a true shepherd to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.